Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play AI War Fleet Command. Fatimix here, and it's time to continue our beginner walkthrough. We've got our setup. We've got mines, turrets, tractor beams in place, static or fixed defenses. It's time to get some ships going. And for that, let's take a look over here at our space dock. We've got five different kinds of ships we can build here. Of course, the upgraded versions are rather more advanced versions that we'd have to unlock through research. But we've got a scout drone. We'll worry about those later. For combat ships, we've got their fighter, bomber, frigate, and of course the raptor that we selected. Now these first three are always the same. Always going to have fighters, bombers, and missile frigates. Let's take a bit closer look at those. And let's pay special attention to the hull type and what they're good at attacking or the attack multipliers. So the fighter has light hull, close combat medium and polycrystal are its preferred opponents. Bomber, polycrystal hull, artillery, command grade, heavy, structural and ultra heavy bonuses. And the missile frigate, artillery hull, composite, light, neutron, refractive swarmer and ultra light bonuses there. That means that the fighter with its polycrystal bonus is good against the bomber. Bomber's artillery bonus is good against the missile frigate, which has that kind of hull. And the missile frigate's artillery bonus is good against the fighter's light hull. That's your basic rock, paper, scissors mechanic. And reinforces the fact that, yes, we've got to balance these things out. Now let's take a look at the Raptor by comparison. It's about three times as fast as the fighter. It's got longer range than any of the other ships. The missile frigate much longer than the other two at 10,000, and the Raptor is at 12,000. It's good against artillery and light, among other things, so the frigate and the fighter. And so, generally, I mean, it's cloaked. It's pretty much a badass at this point in the game. Now, we can't build as many of them. You can see we've got our ship cap down here, 48 Raptors, 96 of each of the others, 10 for the drones, the scout drones, that is. But, uh, the Raptor is still pretty darn outstanding. Now, how many of these do we want? Well, to start with, I'm just going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to right-click here for a rally point. We can reset that anywhere we want. I just don't want them all crowding around the ship. Now, when you add stuff to the queue here, you just click on whatever ship you want down here. It can increase the number of them or put more out here, and it can build like 10 or 12 different types in the queue. Then we've got this up here. We can just build everything and just stop, or do that to loop it. And right now we're going to build everything in a row, but we'll be using lots of loops as the game progresses. And that can really help you keep your ship supplied without babysitting the building. And this is just the on or off switch. I'm going to leave it on. Now say we want to cancel some of these. Well, we can right click down here, or up there, whichever one we like. Let's get rid of them. You've got your single click for one ship, control click for five, and alt click for ten more. So you've got the three different uh, options for how many you might want to build. Now for now, I'm going to build 20 of each of these and 10 Raptors. And so we're only doing a fraction of our total capacity. We just want to get some ships out there and going show how the building process works, all that fun stuff. Let's take a look over at Starships. And I'm going to put this at the same place. We've got several different varieties of these as well. And we will get into those later. There's also the Riot control ships down here. We can actually design special versions of these if we will, we'd like. And I like what it says about these. Specializes in disabling and destroying large numbers of weaker disturbances to the peace. In other words, fleet ships. These are particularly good at taking out groups of fleet ships. Worth keeping in mind. But for now, I'm not going to go with that. I'm just going to go with the flagship. And the reason for that is... As it says at the bottom, boost the strengths of nearby ships. It is a respectable combatant in its own right, but I'm not particularly concerned about that. I'm mostly wanting the boost. If you look part way up, it says attack boost for allied ships. 6,000 range plus 40% bonus. Anything nearby gets a 40% attack bonus. So particularly the higher mark versions of this, but even the starting flagship 
it uh, is really a nice force multiplier, as long as you keep it alive and in the same location as everything else. So we're going to build one of those. Now let's notice it's 100k metal to build it, 10k energy. These are not cheap. They also have much smaller ship caps, as you can see. You don't have huge numbers of starships floating around out there. Build time almost 14 minutes. Yikes. That's if left to its own, though. That's what engineers are for. So let's get these built. And we can see our engineer drones already going to work. They're shooting metal at each of these buildings to speed things up. We've got fighters getting knocked out one every few seconds. And this is not at 13 or 14 minutes, but it's down at, you know, well over four. And it's, uh, it's moving along. Now we can also see our metal. Well, we're using, I don't know, a little over half of this supply. I want to use more of the metal over here. And we need more engineers. So let's go back over here let's grab economy engineer drones and let's just build let's say five let's see what five does control click there again and notice how these just switch automatically and then they're done and now they're shooting at these and even the more expensive bombers are only taking a few seconds you can see our energies roughly uh, staying even and generally speaking good rule of thumb is you'll want enough engineers to more than keep up with your metal production for now I'm gonna stick with this so those are going out this is gradually getting built let's speed things up and get that done a little bit faster and the bombers are finished you can see the frigates are going out a little bit faster and this is down under a minute. So this is not going to take too long. And now we're on to the Raptors. And look at this. The Raptors have a cloak. So the scouts are sending a cloaking beam out there to boost that. Make them harder to detect. That's pretty cool. Okay, this is done. So now everybody's working on this down here. And oh my goodness, it's going to finish quickly now. And there is our flagship. You can see the beams going out. And you can see if we just pick any random ship, it wouldn't matter which one. Uh, keep on that. Attack boosted 1.4 times. So our flagship's doing its job. Now this is plenty of ships for us to play around with and get used to moving them around, what they can do. There are a lot of things that you can do to change the way your ships move and select different amounts of them and all that fun stuff in AI War. So we're just going to band select it first. You can plus control plus any number to set a hotkey group that's pretty much standard fare. So I'm just control one there. Pick something else to select. Hit one again. There we are. Now in the lower right it tells us what we are controlling. 20 bomber ones, 20 fighter ones, a star, a flagship starship, uh, 20 missile frigates, and 10 raptors. Now let's say we only wanted to select one of those. Let's let's just say we want to move the fighters by themselves. Well, I just select them. And anytime you try to move anything, it's just a right click. There they go. I'm just going to zoom out because the icons can be a little bit easier to work with for this. And back into the group. Let's move everybody at once. Let's move a decent distance over here. And there go the Raptors way ahead of everybody, then the fighters, bombers, and flagship, and hey, you going to get there any time today, the missile frigates? Now, that's because everything will naturally move at whatever speed it's capable of. Again, Raptors are much faster than everything else. But you may not want to do that. Having everything arrive at once is more often than not useful. Otherwise, the enemies can be shooting at you when you don't have all your firepower in place. Let's just press G. You can see there that it says G right by the mouse. Real small, but it says it. And right click that way. And now everything moves at the same speed, which will be the speed of the slowest ship. So that makes everything, even the Raptors, slow down to frigate speed. But everything moves together. Let's try this. We're going to go with uh, X and right click. And everything turns yellow. 
because that's an attack move order. So they would attack any enemies that were in range on their way. And you can combine these two. Put X and G together. There's an attack move, but they're all moving at the speed of the slowest ship. Now let's say, for example, you wanted the fighters in front. And you actually might want that to happen at some point. Because they have less range. So if they were to get stuck at the back, they'd have a hard time shooting. And particularly if you get really big, you can get thousands of ships in a group. And that can become a problem. So you may, at certain times, want to do a formation move. And that's just done with J. Let's keep moving at the same speed, so J and G, but let's have the fighters stay on this side of the group. There we go. They're all flying in formation. When they arrive, they're exactly as they were before. There's another mode called Free Roaming Defender. So, in order to do that, you would just press V and right-click somewhere. And then they turn purple. Well, what does that purple outline mean? Free Roaming Defender basically tells them to move and attack any enemies that enter the system. So, the second anybody comes in, they would go to work doing that. And that can be very useful because later on, when we get many different systems, we're not going to want to be babysitting each individual one all the time. So this automates things just a bit. Now, let's say we don't want all these ships. Let's say, you know, I want to split these ships. I want to have half of them go somewhere, half of them go do something else. Simply press L, and we can take half of them and have them go do whatever. Oh, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want half. I, I kind of like to do a third. Select the group again. Shift L. There's a third. It's only 26 out of 71. Put them back together. And then you can combine those also. So you can get almost any number. You know, you can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, or even smaller numbers, because you or bigger numbers, because you could go, you could get 3 twice at 27, whatever. Like, say we wanted to get a sixth. We just hit L to a half, and then shift L to divide that again by a third. And it divides it evenly among all your different types of ships. You notice that uh, four is roughly a sixth. It will round it, it'll round it up, so it'll take slightly more than a sixth if it doesn't divide exactly. But four is about a sixth of 20, and two is about a sixth of 10. So it, that gets it as close as it possibly can and you can easily divide huge groups into you know just small numbers of their component parts and then you could also separate them out so if you only wanted you know you combine that with like taking the bombers and then I'm only going to use half of those bombers off somewhere else and you can do all sorts of things like that to send however many of however many types of ships you want wherever you want okay so I'm done with these ships now for the moment I'm just going to put them in free roaming defender and group move right over here so they can be repaired by engineers. They'll deal with any threats. And let's get some scouts going next. It's our next priority. So get on our space dock here. And I'm just going to build the 10 that we can build of Mark 1s. Leave the Mark 2 uh, scouts here for now. Okay, now we want to send these out to the surrounding systems. We need to deal with the galactic map. And there's a couple ways we can access it. One is down here. It says map. We can select here. But the problem is you tend to actually have it think you're clicking on these buttons down here. I'm not a real big fan of how that works. That time it happened to uh, take my input, but sometimes it'll, you know, flip down here on one of these. There we go as an example. So just hit tab and that'll send us in. In any case, got all kinds of display and filter options down here that we don't really need to mess with for the moment. Good to know that they're there. We've got some other fun stuff on the side including these priority buttons. You can mark different systems with priority numbers 0 through 9. That's generally used as a reminder of how important the system is. For our present purposes, let's just take a look. 
Let's pick a random system somewhere. What about this one? Geoboom. Okay, so you can see it's six hops away. One hop being one jump in AI War, and it'll, you know, lay out a path for you no matter where you go. And if we look at Geoboom's uh, summary there in the lower left, it says, well, we don't know uh, anything about the enemy ships. We've never scouted it. AI is not aware of us uh, there. And, uh, yeah, no supply, uh, no knowledge, no resources. We don't know a whole lot. Let's look at Orm over here. Well, it, the Intel summary moves to the lower right for this system, but you've got the same deal. We don't know anything about it. Okay, let's compare that to our system of Darkfin. It's saying we've got the force field generator, and we've got the home command station showing all of our ships, our income, we do have supply. Supply, by the way, simply allows you to build things. You get supply anywhere you have a command station or system next to it. And then we've got how much knowledge that we've gathered here, what our energy supplies are, and you know the metal resources. All of that is shown. Then we have these little red pips, the ones that are adjacent to us. And those are going to show something a little bit different. It's mostly the same as the other planets out here that we've seen, but not quite. It says, AI is alerted, reinforcement is likely, and we do have supply there, so we can build things there, potentially. Now, the AI being alerted cycles back to the idea that AI war is asymmetrical, the AI plays risk. While we play AI war, they have, essentially, reinforcement points that they get in periodic intervals and they'll get new ships and they'll deploy them based on what systems they have that are on alert most of the reinforcements will go there so what will happen is the systems that are near to you or the systems that you've ticked off in other ways they will get most of the new ships and since they're going to be getting reinforcements that means Time is of the essence because the longer we wait, the more difficult things are going to get. So you do not want to dink around too much. But we definitely want to get more information on these. We need to send a scout out. We can select scouts on the planet and then move out to this system to move them along. And you'll generally want to do that if you want them to go a long distance. For the moment, let's just go back into Darkvin. And we'll just take a ship. If we go over here to Slavboom, it says control right click to send the selected ships through, control left click to send through your view. For now, we'll just send the ships, control right. And we're going to want to get a couple more. For the other systems that are nearby. There we go, on pause and let them go on their merry way. You can see the cloaking boost. Well, it goes away after they get a certain distance out. So, before the scout gets in here, let's take a look at what's on the other side. Okay, now we still get uh, the planet summary, but you see there's only th one thing on it is that control group. Nothing is here. Everything is elsewhere. You can see local zero. That doesn't help us. And the only information we can see about this planet, we've got the you know, circles for the gravity well. We've got the background graphic. Um, we can see where it connects. Dark Vin is green because we control it. White for the other systems because we do not. And they're unexplored. So, that's all we get. We have no idea what, what is here. Let's unpause again. Wait for the scout to show up. There we go. All of a sudden, stuff comes to life and we've got this summary. Let's see what we're looking at. Well, we've got these two things. And then we've also got ships floating around. And that, there's a fighter. There's a fighter. Let's see what they do with our scout. Oh, they're going to do nothing. The reason they do nothing is the scout is still cloaked. And they don't have anything in this vicinity to detect cloaked ships. So, we just move on our merry way. And we just told the scout to come into Slavboom. We didn't tell him to do anything once it gets gets there so where is that going it's heading out here 
the scouts will always by nature other ships won't but the scouts by nature will head to the outside of the gravity well for safety and so they can continue to report on everything that's going on okay now it's out here and we're just gonna pause again so let's head back to the galaxy map and we can see that we've got numbers here and those are the number of enemy ships on those planets if we compare say Usmar to our system well we've got different buildings it's got a warp gate a core shield generator a backup design server um, we'll get into what all those things are uh, command post uh, or command station missile post we see that we have a scout we can see the enemy ships and of what type they are enemy ship levels mark 5 one of those mark 1 34 of those other equals 8 so we have the mo most of them are Mark 1s, the weakest type of ships, the same kind that we have. That will not always be the case. Some planets can start with Mark 2, 3, and 4 ships, and that'll be what most of their ships are. They'll be tougher to take on. And the AI homeworlds get Mark 5 ships, which are especially fun. And farther down, last time it was scouted, um, we do get supply, etc. We haven't taken any knowledge. There's no energy resources here that we're using, and there are four potential metal deposits. Aosmity has some slightly different things. Six metal deposits. And Slav Boom has two force field generators. That'll be fun. Two metal deposits. And then, some again, some different types of things that we will get into not quite yet. But all of these are Mark I planets. They usually are adjacent to your homeworld. Further out, things are going to get tougher. Now I should mention this whole idea of sending one scout to each planet, not usually the best idea for a couple reasons. One, you can see that they didn't they lost the cloaking boost that we have with our scouts because they pair up into, you know, pairs with one providing and one receiving cloaking boost. Well, if you send them out one at a time, you don't get that. It's There also will eventually run into things that can detect the cloak scouts and will blow them up. And so you generally want to send them out in groups. We're just doing this to see immediately what's around us right now. And that is going to do it for this particular episode. We're going to take a closer look next time at what's in those systems. What are we going to do about that? talk about a couple more game concepts and I would expect get into our first combat. So thanks for watching. More AI War Fleet Command coming up soon. We'll get some fighting going when we return.